Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, not Smokey. The way I kind of stepped back from Hollywood at one point, you know, being the highest paid act in Hollywood, yeah. but I, I felt like, you know, it was, it was a ceiling right there. Yeah, I wanted more, it wasn't enough. Ever wondered why Chris Tucker isn't in movies much these days? It's like he vanished from Hollywood when he was at his peak with Rush Hour breaking records and then he's gone. It's rare for a big movie star like him to just leave Hollywood like that. But that's exactly what happened. Cat Williams has a theory. He thinks Tucker got too deep into the shady side of showbiz, like he saw things he couldn't handle. It's almost like he was pushed out. You know, in Hollywood, if you fall out of favor, it's hard to bounce back. Well, Cat believes that's what happened to Chris. He thinks Chris was used and then tossed aside when they were done with him. And it's all because of Tucker's connection to Epstein Island. Yep, Chris Tucker was involved and it's got people talking. Some may doubt Cat Williams' story because he's controversial, but there's some truth to what he's saying. Reports about Tucker's ties to big names like Epstein have been out there. And guess what? Tucker confirmed it himself. Yeah, he was connected to Jeffrey Epstein. Crazy, right? But why does it matter? Well, with Epstein's whole scandal, being linked to him isn't a good look. It makes you wonder what really happened behind the scenes. When you think of Chris Tucker, you probably think of Rush Hour or his stand-up comedy. He was killing it in both. He was everywhere back then. But while his partner kept going, Tucker left. People wondered why someone with so much potential would bail. Some said he was just rich enough already, but Williams suggested there's more to it. Turns out Tucker realized Hollywood wasn't what he thought. Being on top showed him some sketchy stuff, and he decided to leave. Chris Tucker's journey from stand-up comedy to Hollywood stardom was like a wild roller coaster ride. He started with his clean and witty humor on Def Comedy Jam back in 92. His journey began with his film debut in House Party 3, where things really took off for Chris Tucker. Growing up in Atlanta with his crew of two sisters and three brothers, Chris knew how to keep the laughs rolling. From hosting talent shows to trying his hand at stand-up comedy, he was determined to make it big. At just 19, he packed his bags and headed to Los Angeles, ready to kickstart his comedy career. And boy, did he hit the ground running. Chris Tucker was killing it on the comedy scene, hitting up Def Comedy Jam and mingling with legends like Bernie Mac. Then suddenly, he lands a role in Ice Cube's Friday, and he becomes the talk of the town. As Smokey, he earned mad props and MTV Movie Award nominations left and right. He also made waves in the music scene, appearing in music videos for heavyweights like Dr. Dre, Tupac, and Maze. But it was his role as Smokey in Friday that really put him on the map. Director Gary Gray saw something special in Chris, even though his audition was just okay. Gray knew Chris's improv skills were off the charts and saw in him the potential to bring Smokey to life like nobody else could. They wrapped up filming Friday with just 3.5 million bucks in just 20 days. When the movie hit screens in 95, Chris Tucker, Ice Cube, John Witherspoon, Tiny Lister, and Nia Long turned it into a cult classic. It banked a cool $28.5 million, sending Chris's status as a legit actor through the roof. As Smokey, Chris had crowds rolling with laughter, showing off a whole new side to his talent. But in 1997, everything flipped upside down for Tucker. First off, he wowed audiences in The Fifth Element, proving he could handle big-budget blockbusters. In a viral interview on Shannon Sharp's Club Shake, Tucker discussed why making another Friday movie could be tough given the loss of some great people from the original films. But Williams, not one to hold back, pointed out that Tucker's style has changed since his days as Smokey. Then came Money Talks, a comedy riot that had people busting a gut in theaters. And just when you thought he couldn't top that, boom. He nails it in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown, holding his own alongside big name actors. But the real game changer? Rush Hour. Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker together on the big screen. It was gold. The Rush Hour trilogy was minting cash faster than you could say money moves, and Chris was raking in those fat paychecks like there's no tomorrow in 2001. While Rush Hour 2 was blowing up the box office, Chris Tucker made a cameo in Michael Jackson's iconic You Rock My World music video. But then he kind of dipped out of sight until Rush Hour 3 dropped in 2007. Now, Rush Hour 3 had big shoes to fill after that long wait, 
but let's be real, it didn't quite hit the mark. But just as fast as he rose to fame, he seemed to disappear from the limelight. He just vanished into thin air. Since then, Chris has only popped up in two more flicks, Silver Linings Playbook and Billy Lynn's Halftime Walk. But like one flop ain't enough to make someone disappear for over a decade, right? Two movies since 2010, that's it. What gives Chris? Turns out, Chris Tucker was playing the long game. The way I kind of stepped back from Hollywood, at one point, you know, being the highest paid act in Hollywood, yeah. but I, I felt like, you know, it was it was a ceiling right there, and yeah. I wanted more, it wasn't enough. Right. So I stepped back, lived a little bit, traveled the world, and did a lot of humanitarian stuff that really uh, showed, broadened my perspective for right. the world, that, you know, it ain't just about me being the biggest comic or actor in the world, it's about, you know, becoming somebody to give to the world, you know, inspire in some kind of way. He was picky about his roles, he straight up said no thanks to parts in Any Given Sunday, Lethal Weapon 4, and Django Unchained. Brett Ratner, the director of Rush Hour, once spilled the tea, estimating that Chris turned down nearly $100 million worth of gigs. And guess what? Chris confirmed it himself, saying he's all about those great experiences over stacking cash. So you know how Chris Tucker was killing it in the Rush Hour movies, right? He was making bank, living that A-list life. But then he was like, hold up, there's more to life than just being a big shot in Hollywood. In an interview with My Classics ATL, Chris spilled the tea on why he dipped out of the spot. Light. He was feeling like he hit a ceiling, even as the highest paid actor in Tinseltown. He wanted something deeper, something that wasn't just about fame and fortune. So he took a step back, did some soul searching, traveled the world, and got into doing humanitarian work. And don't get it twisted, Chris ain't hurting for cash. According to Celebrity Net Worth, he made a cool $50 million from rush hour alone after adjusting for inflation. That's like $65 million. So yeah, he's good. When it comes to Tucker, there's some real talk about how he shook things up in Hollywood. Fox once opened up about feeling a bit uneasy when Tucker suddenly stole the spotlight. But beyond all the glitz, Tucker was feeling stuck. See, in Hollywood, success often means getting stuck in the same old roles, and Tucker wasn't feeling it. He wanted more than just the usual gig, so he started saying no to big money roles that didn't match his vision. Some called him picky, others saw it as him going his own way. But here's the thing, Hollywood wasn't seeing past his skin color. They kept offering him those same old stereotypical roles, trying to put him in a box. And let's not even start on typecasting, Hollywood's way of keeping actors like Tucker pigeonholed, not giving them a chance to show what they've got. So while Tucker made a few cameos here and there, folks started wondering if he'd make a big comeback or if he'd lost his touch. But the real deal is Tucker was playing a risky game in a tough industry. Hollywood likes to have control, preferring actors who fit their mold. But Tucker, he was all about breaking free and showing what he's capable of. Even though he hit it big in his career, he wasn't feeling fulfilled. Hollywood had him feeling boxed in, so he made a bold move and stepped back. Instead of chasing fame and fortune, he wanted something deeper. In an interview, Tucker spilled the beans about why he left Hollywood. He wasn't about to let the industry dictate his career choices or how he lived his life. Hollywood's all about about keeping people in line, but Tucker wasn't having it. He wanted to be his own boss, not some poopit on strings. And let's talk about feeling emasculated. Hollywood had Tucker feeling some type of way, always pushing him into roles that didn't let him show his full reign. It was like they couldn't see beyond his humor to his depth as an actor. This situation wasn't just holding him back, it was feeding into harmful stereotypes about black men. But Tucker wasn't about to let Hollywood bring him down. He stuck to his guns, even when it meant saying no to some big opportunities. Some fans admired his determination, while others thought he was just rebelling against the system. But let's be real, Hollywood wasn't exactly making things easy. Their lack of diversity and refusal to adapt to the times were seriously holding back talented artists like Tucker. It felt like they were stuck in the past, dishing out the same old scripts and expecting different results. No wonder Tucker wanted out. And then there's Tucker's roller coaster ride with his finances. He was living it up, splurging on a fancy mansion in Orlando. But then TMZ dropped a bombshell about his unpaid taxes, and California came knocking with a hefty bill. But Tucker hustled his way out of debt. Now, according to Cat Williams, Tucker's sudden departure might be linked to some dark stuff in the industry. Williams hinted that Tucker might have crossed paths with Jeffrey Epstein, the infamous financier known for his connections to a disturbing operation, along alongside Ghislaine Maxwell. Epstein ran this twisted scheme on Little St. James, his private island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. His story ended tragically in a Manhattan jail cell while awaiting trial. In a recent interview on Shannon Sharp's Club, Shay Katz suggested that Tucker's change
changed, hinting that the Chris Tucker we see now might have more in common with Epstein Island than the character Smokey from Friday. So while we're all reminiscing about the good old days of Friday, it seems like Tucker might have some skeletons in his closet. Tucker's involvement is murky. Back in 2002, he joined Epstein, former President Bill Clinton, and disgraced actor Kevin Spacey on a trip to South Africa for the Clinton Foundation. However, Tucker claims he had no idea whose plane they were boarding. Chris denied setting foot on Epstein's island, stating it was just a one-time humanitarian deal. While there's been speculation, there's no hard evidence linking Tucker to Epstein's darker deeds beyond that single trip. But some fans aren't convinced. They point out Tucker's reaction to the question about the trip, suggesting there might be more to the story. Enough said. Sometimes they slap the label humanitarian on things to fly under the radar. But here's the deal. Cat Williams' story isn't just a tall tale. There's solid evidence to back it up, and it's causing waves not just in Hollywood, but all the way from California. Take a look at this picture of Chris Tucker. When those sealed court documents related to Epstein were opened, it was like opening Pandora's box of scandal. Over 170 big shots were named, including some heavy hitters from politics and showbiz. Ever since Epstein's arrest, the media has been scrambling to figure out what really happened on his private island. Locals spilled the beans, saying he was still bringing in underage girls even after his conviction. Witnesses at the airstrip on St. Thomas reported seeing Epstein traveling with girls who seemed too young to be flying alone. Flight records tell a wild story too. Epstein's jets were constantly on the move, hopping from one city to another across the globe. Now, here's where it gets juicy. The celebrity guest list for Epstein's Island reads like a who's who of the rich and famous. We're talking Leonardo DiCaprio, Donald Trump, and even Michael Jackson, who, according to Cat Williams, was close with Chris Tucker. So when Cat dropped that bomb about Tucker's Epstein Island connection, it wasn't just some random rumor. It was tied to a scandal that's rocking the industry to its core. And with the truth gradually emerging, who knows what other secrets are lurking in the shadows of Hollywood's elite. Considering the big names from the entertainment world mentioned in all this Epstein drama, it's not hard to imagine Tucker scoring an invite to the infamous island. After all, he was a big name in the industry at the time, right? Fans are divided over cat stories. Some are like, I'm telling y'all there's something fishy, while others are surprised or still in denial. But Trump and his family have been in Epstein's Black Book, which was released a while ago and redacted. And yes, Chris Tucker is in it too, which some point to as a reason for his sudden exit from the smoky role in Friday. But then there are those who staunchly defend Tucker, swearing he wasn't involved in anything shady. Chris Tucker was a friend of Bill Clinton's. They did humanitarian work with Bono for a while. They just hitched a ride on Epstein's plane, maybe for legitimate reasons. Chris Tucker seems to have no other connections to Epstein beyond this trip. Here's Chantal Davies stating that nothing happened during the trip. But guess who's back in action now? That's right, Chris Tucker is hitting the big screen again in a movie called Air. It's all about Michael Jordan's journey to scoring that legendary Nike deal. Chris plays Howard White, the Nike exec who made it all happen. And guess what? It's been seven whole years since Chris graced us with his acting skills on the silver screen. Tucker spoke to GQ, revealing that people keep asking him why he's been missing in action from the spotlight. And you know what? He's totally clueless about how to respond because in his mind, he's always hustling. It's shocking because I guess I'm the last person to know it, he said. Because I'm always working. Stand-up comedy or something else, I'm working. So when they say that, I'm like, okay, I guess I haven't been on the big screen in a while. Chris has been all over the map, literally. He's been involved in various projects in every time zone and has even put in serious work for humanitarian causes worldwide. Talk about a packed schedule. And here's the thing. He's not just jet setting for fun. He's actually attending different events to soak in knowledge, not just cash in as a speaker. But here's the interesting part. Tucker wants to be more than just a career machine. He's all about that well-rounded life vibe, partly because it'll make him a killer actor. I think it's good when you can go away and have a life outside of the business a little bit, a lot of bit, he said. Art imitates life, so you've got to have a full life to do great work. So even though Tucker was living the high life with all the cars and private jets money could buy, he realized he was craving something deeper from his acting gigs. I knew I didn't want to just make a whole bunch of money making movies that don't really mean anything. I knew it wouldn't make me happy, he told GQ. It got to a point that I wanted to only do special roles and those things weren't coming to me and I couldn't find them. And I said, well, let me travel a little bit, live a little bit, instead of waiting on those things. 
what really gets Tucker's acting juices flowing? Trust, collaboration, and the freedom to flex his creative muscles within the script. And he hit the jackpot with air. The movie wasn't just another gig. It was a deep dive into his character, Howard White, a Nike big shot he already knew from his global adventures. According to the grapevine at GQ, Tucker even took control of his character's lines, crafting them himself. Let's rewind to 2001, when Tucker was already feeling the urge to be more selective with his roles. I had so much crazy stuff thrown at me. Everything that you've seen that a black person could be in, they offered it to me first, and I was like, nope, 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 and nope, he said. And here's the thing, he couldn't just settle for anything. To be honest, I couldn't find anything worth doing, so I spent the time soul-searching and growing up. I feel I'm young and I've got a long time to do movies, and I didn't want to just jump out there and do any movie stuff just to do it, Tucker explained. I wanted to do stuff that I was really going to have fun with. So why did he end up back in the rush hour saddle for round two? Well, let's just say the $20 million offer helped. But you know what's cool? Chris isn't just about making movies for the sake of it. He wants to drop some wisdom, just like the classics that inspired him back in the day. Think Casablanca, The Color Purple, and Coming to America. Plus, he's eyeing a book and more movies down the line. Chris managed to shake off Hollywood's attempts to control and pigeonhole him, and that's something to celebrate. Cat Williams thinks Tucker's success gave him VIP access access to Hollywood's darkest secrets. And if Williams's word is gold, then Tucker might have seen some stuff that made him say peace out emotionally. The industry might have just worn him down. You know, it's like he wanted more, but got tired of the same old song and dance. It's a wild ride of speculation, with fans debating every angle. Did Tucker see some shady stuff that made him bail on Hollywood? Or is this all just a case of guilt by association?